Now I've always been wanting to search for the perfect batter. I mean, I make a nice batter and I'm gonna make that for you today. But I do remember other ones that I thought have even been better. Now I remember when I first came to Australia, one of the first restaurants I ever went to was Fanny's. And this is in Melbourne. And it was called Fanny's by Gaslight. And it was owned by Gloria and Bly Staley. And they went on to own Fanny's. They took the Gaslight that disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the gaslight. That disappeared. They had Glow Glows, they had Shayos, they had, what was the one in Surfers? The Beach Club, that's right. Anyway, the point of the story is the most interesting thing is Gloria was a very creative person and always was way ahead of the game with some interesting dishes. But their biggest seller was their fish and chips, which was amazing, isn't it? I suppose they did a businessman clientele in those days no one really did good fish and chips, so that's what they used to do. So, Andrew Blake was the chef there for a while, and he was the chef at Shea Oz, and this is the batter from him, which he reckons is from Fanny's. First of all, we start off with three quarters of a cup of self-raising flour and a quarter of a cup of corn flour. To that, we add three quarters of a cup of pale ale. So any pale ale is fine. So that's three quarters of a cup that goes in. And we also add some water, which we will add once we've just mixed this. And we just use a spoon to mix this. Now this is a batter that has to sit for a while. So just mix that roughly. And then you add some water to make it to a batter consistency. But Andrew says, and Andrew's a terrific chef actually, always was. Very, very clever man. He says that you leave it with some lumps in it. So don't, don't beat the heck out of it. Don't whisk it at this stage. You can do that later. And as I said, you just add water to get the consistency of a batter without beating the heck out of it. And then my friends, we leave that for 20 minutes. See, it's still got some lumps in it and it's sort of a batter consistency and we'll have a look later. So that's the first one and we will come back in 20 minutes and we'll make the odd other one. But just before we do that, what I will do is make some tartare sauce. So I've got some chopped capers, I've got some chopped spring onions, I've got some chopped gherkins and of course there's a little bit of chopped parsley going in there as well and some mayonnaise. Now I've just bought a, a bought mayonnaise, Hellman's I think it was, which is a good one but I've, I do show you how to make homemade mayonnaise on the show so you can look that up if you like. But the, but the Hellman's is good. So just mix that up well, and there we have the tartare sauce, which will go with our fish and chips later on when I find my perfect batter. All right, I know our half hour is not quite up, but we've got another two batters to make, remember? So we'll come back to that. Right, from Captain Moonlight in Anglesey. Great name, isn't it? Anyway, supposedly the greatest batter ever, so we will see, won't we? So 100 grams of plain flour and 100 grams of rice flour. 350 mils of soda water. And this is the thing that intrigues me. 20 mils of vodka. Now we'll see, won't we? So you just whiz that up. That's gonna be quite a light batter, isn't it? Oh no, it's not so bad. I'm always a great believer in you sticking your finger, see if it coats your finger, but that is fairly light. The captain reckons that the vodka, as opposed to beer, makes it crisper. And we shall see, Captain, won't we? <laughs> right. Now, this is my batter from the fish gaff. And I reckon over the years, we made about 4 million tons of this. So, the first secret or the main secret is you always use warm, freshly open lager. And that is because the yeast in that helps. So one cup of lager. I always used Foster's for some reason. They got the best result with that, I don't know. Maybe it's because I then drank the rest of it. And a half a cup of water, cold water, 200 grams of self-raising flour. And I've also got some baking powder. Now the self-raising flour, the secret to that is always a fresh packet of self-raising flour, just a small one, but a fresh packet. And you add some baking powder. The reason for the fresh packet is it keeps the yeast content or the baking powder content, it is really alive. And I also add about a teaspoon of salt to that, which is not normal because people I've, that I know that are expert cooks say the salt deflates the gases, but it doesn't seem to with this. And the other secret to this one, now I'm not saying it's going to be the best batter, I haven't tried these, but the other secret to it is that you add your flour mix a little bit at a time and you don't stop stirring it. Now you can add some more flour if need be, 
When I say 200, I say about 200. Once again, until it coats your finger. But don't just throw it in at once and don't wander off and answer the phone. I'd say off the top of my head, this is definitely gonna take more than 200. And we got a bit excited by the amount of beer. Now that's looking good. Now, so that's my batter from the fish calf, which was my dad's batter, to be honest. Now, back to Andrew Blake's batter from Fanny's. So now we can whisk that, and that is far too thick, as you can see, and now you can add some water to it. All right, guys, we've got three batters, and we'll see how we go. Now, the first one I'm going to do, because I'll still leave that for a little. I will try Captain Moonlight's. With Captain Moonlight's and Fanny's one, you dust them with flour. With the fish calf, you don't. So we'll try, and always, always, just hold it. I'm just doing it in vegetable oil. Just hold it until it floats so that it doesn't stick to the bottom. All right, if you're a fan of Captain Moonlight, keep your fingers <laughs> And we better get some paper to drain it. Now I'm only doing them one at a time, guys, because otherwise, how will I know which is which? Now I reckon this is about right, but do remember guys, and I'm not making any excuses, but it's gonna be a bit paler because it's fresh oil. So let's just take that one out. Now, next, let's have a look at the fannies number. When you put the flour on it, make sure you dust any excess off. Oh, that's not looking, the colour's dead. That's not bad, is it? And we'll have a taste of that. Bit of sea salt. Oh, that, that, that feels good. That's the one with the vodka in it. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, I like that. That's good batter. I like that. It's crispy and crunchy and light. Oh. Mmm. All right, let's pull this one out. Oh, this is, now see, this has a better color. That, see, that looks good, doesn't it? It's a good looking piece of fish. Now, the last one is my fish calf batter, or it's actually my dad's batter, but this one, we didn't ever put in flour first, so that's interesting. A little bit of sea salt. Interestingly, that um, the Captain Moonlight one didn't stay crisp. Good flavor, but it didn't stay crisp. Maybe I didn't make it. See, this seems, you can hear it, can't you? Can you? <laughs> I can. Mmm. It's good. Alright guys, last but not least. Ooh, that looks good. What can I say? The winner, Johnny Hewitson's batter from The Last Aussie Fish Cup. That is beautiful. Light, fresh, crispy. <laughs> that was a fleet, wasn't it? Of course, I'm not the most unbiased judge in the world, but that is a bloody good batter. And can I suggest fish and chips? A young Riesling is always wonderful. <laughs>